Wow, welcome back everybody. I feel like we haven't done one of these in a long time because we haven't, but we are back. I know I said that for test 27 as well, but yeah, we are back. So number one, we probably shouldn't quibble. Uh, basically somebody who quibbles a lot is kind of a complainer, a whiner, a bickerer, kind of finding fault with things. So the best answer out of these five is going to be B, nitpick. Nitpick, of course, is going to be a synonym of that, you know, kind of finding complaints and finding fault with a lot of things. Number two, this font is quite gauche. So gauche can mean a couple of things. If you if you describe a person, it means kind of clumsy, awkward. But if you describe a, a thing like a font, it's going to be something that's not very sophisticated, something that kind of appears, you know, maybe out of place. So the best answer is going to be be inelegant. Number three, he's a wily teenager. I probably tricked a couple of you guys. Whenever you think about teenager, you probably think awkward, rebellious, lethargic. But believe it or not, wily actually means clever or shrewd. Number four, Tim's sophistries had become more frequent. So again, you might think this has something to do with, uh, you know, sleeping. There's a GRE word that kind of sounds like this. To me, these are one of those words that you just have to know. For me, like I just had to study this word. Uh, there's no indication of what it means by what it looks like, at least for me. And what it means is a fallacious argument basically a fallacy, an argument that just doesn't make much sense or kind of puts forth a logical inconsistency. So the best choice is going to be E, fallacies. All right, moving on, everybody. Number five, the story agitated Gitika. So was she bored? Was she confounded? Was she intrigued? Was she unnerved? Was she angered? She was unnerved. So basically, it kind of bothered her. It disturbed her. Number six, the individuals should be quarantined. If you don't know the meaning of this word right now, then you haven't been watching the news or listening to the radio. Do people still listen to the radio? But basically, you haven't been living in 2020. The correct answer is, of course, going to be isolated. Number seven, upon hearing the news, she responded with a coy smile. So coy can basically mean shy or modest, but almost in a purposeful way. So typically, if somebody's going to act in a coy manner, it's almost like they're intentionally acting shy or modest to be alluring or attractive. So the best answer is going to be B, modest. Number eight, the fans were hysterical. You guys might have heard the word hysterics. Basically, they're very, very emotional, just going crazy. Think about the Beatles in the 1960s. So the best answer is going to be D, overwrought. Overwrought with emotion, that kind of thing. Number nine, she recanted her belief. So she basically no longer believes it. She gave it up. And if you look at these five choices, the one that means that is going to be disavowed. So if you disavow your belief, you basically, you know, you no longer believe that thing. Number 10, the company is in a quandary. Uh, this sounds bad, right? So you just have to ask yourself, is it one of these bad things? You know, political crisis, delicate period, atypical malaise. But no, it, it basically just means a tough problem, a difficult situation. You know, they don't know what path to take. Do you go left? Do you go right? It's just a little bit unclear. Number 11, the experience was a personal affront. So how dare you? How, how dare you? You know, that kind of thing. How dare you? Right? So the best answer is going to be C, offense. Number 12, the plant is endemic, endemic to this area. Again, one of those words for me that you just have to study. This word sounds so much like the word pandemic. It's so hard to confuse them unless you study. Endemic doesn't really have a negative meaning. It just means native to the area. Does it look like it means native to the area? No, at least not to me, but that's what it means. 13, the substance was abstracted very carefully. Notice I'm using abstract here as a verb, not as an adjective. Whenever you abstract something from something, you remove or separate it. Number 14, he burnished his legacy. Now, this is a word that ETS might throw your way just to kind of mess with you, mess with your head. It's actually a positive word. It has nothing to do with burn or anything like that. And what it means is to, you know, perfect or to enhance. So the best answer is going to be C. So you know ETS loves words like this because it really confuses people, right? Another example would be like the word restive. Number 15, the organizers asked the crowd to disperse, basically get out of here, you know, scatter. 16, the enmity you carry is well known. People who have a lot of enmity are just very pissed off at the world. Very bitter. 
And if you look at the five choices, which one is going to be the best one? It's going to be E, hostility. Now, regret, trauma, burden, all of those are also negative words, as is envy. But it's not specifically what enmity means. Hostility is going to be the best fit right there. Number 16, he is a retiring fellow. Another word that ETS might throw your way just to mess with you. It has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with quitting a job or stopping a job. Basically, what it means is shy modest, you know, not very uh, forthcoming. So the best answer is going to be A, self-effacing. Number 18, the coast was ravaged, probably by a storm, right? But I didn't want to include that because it would have been a little bit too obvious. The correct answer is A, devastated. Number 19, the industry is in its inchoate stage. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. But basically, it's a baby. The industry is a baby, so what's the best choice here? Correct answer is C, beginning growing kind of fits. The problem is if you choose growing, you're kind of eliminating the better answer of beginning here. So, you know, test taking strategy, right? Number 20, the professor valued impudent remarks. Uh, maybe this professor just values boldness. You know, he values his students to have a voice of their own, even if they occasionally cross over into the rude category. The best answer is gonna be brazen. 21, the mayor is a redoubtable opponent. Again, I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly. These are one of these words, or this is one of these words where you just have to study it because if you assume it has something to do with doubt, you're gonna be way off base. What it actually means is fearsome, intimidating, formidable. I know, believe it or not, right? Go ahead and check the dictionary, crazy, right? Number 22, her voice was shrill. That just sounds shrill. This, this word sounds like the meaning. The correct answer is piercing, shrill, like it's a word that you don't really like to have in your ear, right? 23, he deprecates the content on TV. I'm sure you've heard the phrase self-deprecating humor. You've probably heard that before, right? People who have self-deprecating humor kind of criticize themselves. So the best answer here is going to be he objects to, like he doesn't like the content on TV. 24, this magazine is disdain. Do magazines still exist anymore in 2020? I remember growing up subscribing to a few magazines about video games, and then they were getting progressively smaller as the internet was getting progressively bigger. So the correct answer here is going to be scorned. You know, people don't like this magazine. 25, this idea needs to be quashed, basically smashed like a bug, right? Correct answer is going to be B, stopped. The procedure involved distending the vein. Another very difficult one here, at least in my opinion, unless you study it. Believe it or not, distending something means to make it bigger or to make it like more open. Again, I would have no idea if I saw this word the first time. I never would in a million years think this means to enlarge something. 27, his penchant for golf was widely publicized. So basically, he likes golf. He has a fondness for golf. 28, our current plans are in abeyance. Are they being enacted? Are they serving as a model? Are they under revision? Are they under wraps? Or are they on hold? On hold may basically means nothing's happening right now. We're trying to maybe, you know, gather more information. And so that's what in abeyance means. Right now, I think a lot of universities are in abeyance. They don't know exactly when they're going to open back up. They're trying to see how the situation will, you know, kind of reveal itself in the coming months. 29, he's an august, not august, august politician. So this has nothing to do with the month or anything like that. What it means is essentially regal or king-like or very lordly, very high. And if you look at the five choices, the best one is going to be distinguished. And then finally, 30, please substantiate your claim. This is a word we like to use in the GRE argument essay. So basically, the author has three assumptions that he did not substantiate, which means he did not justify them or provide good reasoning for. So the best answer is going to be E, justify. Anyway, guys, if you are still hanging out with me, please check out uh, Greg Matt Plus if you want to join this community. It's a pretty cool community. Five bucks a month. We do about, uh, what is it, 10 live classes, 10 live classes uh, a week something like that. And then right now on the website, I think we have like 300 classes already recorded, which you can watch and, you know, at your leisure, at your leisure, completely up to you guys. Uh, if you are interested in checking that out, all you have to do is just go to www.gregmat.com.
dot com and then forward slash is that a forward slash or a backslash i think it's a forward sign up all right guys i hope you enjoyed this video uh sorry for the lag time in between 27 and 28 hey but better late than never right all right guys i will talk to you later everyone have a great day